sinister, nefarious. There are a whole bunch of adjectives that we can put out here about what is being done by this organization. They have co-opted mothers and motherhood in order to accomplish their own political agenda. And the reality is, it's actually about domination. It's about white supremacy. It's about racism. And it's sometimes subtle things. But in the 21st century, it looks like subtle racism is a thing of the past. If we weren't in the church, I would probably use some colorful language. But they don't give a darn. So how, 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 did, how did we locally, how did we get here, okay? First off, I, I do believe that uh, with Moms for Liberty, they decided because their underlying theme is parental rights, that the softest targets that they could ever go after would be, first off, school systems, school boards, infiltrating those school boards. In Berkeley County, there was a complete takeover. They won six out of nine seats in Berkeley County, being the supermajority. There was nothing that anybody could do to stop anything that they wanted to do. The first thing they did, they fired legal counsel that was in a good place, that was successful. Well, actually, the first thing that they did was replace the chairman of the board with their Moms for Liberty person. Then they fired legal counsel. Then they fired the superintendent. And they replaced those three positions, that were, well, those positions with their people. Now having a six to three supermajority over that school board, there was nothing there to stop them from doing anything they did. And even though the good people of Berkeley County tried to fight against it, unfortunately, once the ballots were cast and they had that majority vote, that couldn't be undone. Let's shift from Berkeley County then into Charleston County, where they tried to do the same thing. And these candidates, when they were running in 2022, they didn't just come out and say, you know, we're moms for liberty, we're this nefarious group, we're going to, you know, take over your lives. They didn't come out with that. They picked some nice, ordinary people, some, some kind of church folks, too. They had a little churchy flair to them. Kind of deceived the community into, into, into supporting them. The community was not aware then, as the community is now, as to the nature of what Moms for Liberty was about. So we saw Moms for Liberty get in in Berkeley County and take over. We saw Moms for Liberty almost get in totally in Charleston County. But thank God it went into a special election that the Mom for Liberty candidate actually lost. Because we started manning up. We started seeing that something is going on here and we need to stop this. Fortunately, instead of allowing them to get a super majority in Charleston County School District, they came up with a 5-4 win. And if anybody has been following the school district and the school board meetings in Charleston County for the last year, you can see the chaos and confusion that they have created within our school board and school district that has actually placed the education of our children on the back burner. It's actually not even existing. One of their goals as Moms for Liberty is to eliminate a curriculum in Charleston County that's actually working for poor black, black, and brown kids. The data came in a few months ago that said that those kid children in Charleston County School District that have been literally starving of an education for two decades, all of a sudden the data is starting to shift because of the EL curriculum. This curriculum was implemented and now we see poor black and brown children actually thriving in school. They're learning. The grades reflected. The parents are at home saying, Little Johnnies have enjoyed going to school. They're coming home and doing their homework. 
they're getting along with each other. But under the guise of supposedly eliminating diversity and inclusion or getting rid of, rid of the social emotional learning system that they want to do in order to preserve, and forgive me for putting this way, in order to preserve their whiteness in their own group of children, they're willing to compromise and sacrifice the education of the education of poor black and brown children. It doesn't mean a thing to them. One of the best times, and I've had some trouble times inside of Charles, uh, Charleston County School District. I'll just go ahead and say that. <laughs> That's all right. But I've had, you know, I've had some, some trouble times inside of Charleston County School District. But earlier this year, when they brought up when they announced those scores and the change in the attitudes and the, the, the principals and the teachers were there, and they talked about the attitudes of the children and that they're really enjoying learning again, that did something inside of my heart and inside of my soul. I sat there, I smiled for that whole meeting just to be brought back to reality by this group of people who sit five to four on this board and the reality that they are trying to eliminate this curriculum. And we got loud and we blocked that for them because they're not going anywhere. They're still five to four on that board. Now, when they ran last year, and we finally were able to see the funds that were actually put into the campaigns by Moms for Women, the person that was seated in the chair of the board, Pam McKinney, she had a, a $91,000 campaign cost, $91,000 in donation in the school board race. I guess to my detriment running for U.S. Senate, a statewide campaign, I raised $40,000. That was it. Somebody really wanted her in that seat, along with the other four in that seat. Moms for Liberty. Why? Because they want to take control of the educational system for their own purposes. Period. Which is about the under education everybody that does not fit their model and get in line behind what they want to do. They want to dictate lives, seriously. And it's bigger than that. And that's why we're here tonight. That's why what we're doing with Parents Against Chaos is educating the community about just how deep this thing is. It's not just school boards. And it's already been explained how they have infiltrated through the election process school boards and that they're expanding that operation into municipal government, state government, and no doubt even into our federal government system. What we have here, what we're looking at, if we are not careful and if we're not diligent and if we don't man up, we're looking at total control of our nation. Under the guise of dominionism. And my colleague is going to talk about that later on in this scene. It's, we look at the election cycle just now. Roy just talked about it a bit. And we look at, let's just say, North Charleston, where I live, where I promoted <coughs> a particular candidate for mayor and candidates for city council. But Moms for Liberty, we tracked it back, and at least three candidates running for mayor were Moms for Liberty people. At least three. Two or three running for city council. Fortunately, in North Charleston, they didn't win. They didn't win. Because we pushed the truth out there and informed the community on what they were up against these Moms for Liberty candidates. And the community understood the danger of allowing these people to get into office. Let me stop before I go any further and talk about, very briefly, about that 
thing about recommendations of candidates that Knowledge and Liberty said because they can only endorse school board candidates? I just did a little simple Webster, Miriam Webster, look up, you know, a, a, a terminology, definitions, right? The word, if you look up or Google the word endorse, and you look at the definitions under it, endorse means to recommend. That's exactly what it means. And if you look up recommend, up under it says to endorse. So when they say that they, uh, they can only recommend candidates, the reality is by definition, they're saying that they can endorse candidates. But there's a simple thing to look at beyond that, is that why would anybody recommend a candidate that doesn't represent what they believe in? So anytime we see a candidate that's been recommended by Moms for Liberty, that candidate believes exactly what they believe in, or they believe that they can manipulate or use or get support from that candidate. So let's not fall for that issue. Let's not let them play those word games at all. So these, they took over the controlling vote in Charleston County School District. And again, it's been nothing but chaos. Anybody y'all been watching? Yes. Y'all watch the videos? Yes. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I, I want to make it perfectly clear. For us as activists that attend those meetings, first off, it's nothing new. We've been in those meetings for the last 10, 12 years, fighting to keep our privatization, coalition for kids. That's a laundry list. Okay. This ain't new to us. But we don't delight in going to these school board meetings. You know, so there's a thousand other things we could be doing. I can't rent babies I can spend the time. But it's that important. It's that important for all of us that go to those meetings to let our voice be heard. And fortunately, a lot of the damage that could have been done inside of those meetings by those five Moms for Liberty board members has been circumvented by those four saints <laughs> that are working hard for our children on that school board and what they call their fifth vote, which is us, the people. Now is the time for us to understand our obligation. Our obligations are not only within the school district to bring awareness to what Moms for Liberty is actually doing. They're not trying to, they're doing this, okay? These people are already seeing it. But our obligation is also to be aware that they're expanding their operation into government, seriously into government. They want mayoral seats. They want city council seats. They want county council seats. They want every seat that they can because they've understood the, the concept of governance and that once elected, you'll hear them always say, duly elected, that's a term they love to use, duly elected, and they, whatever is done, it's done by the, their representatives who were duly elected by the public. Even if the public didn't go vote, the majority of the public didn't go vote, we have got to flip that. Because we allow when we don't vote, we allow this chaos, this mayhem, this insanity to infect our society and our system. Ultimately, ultimately, if we don't change this thing for the next two or three generations at least, and even beyond that, our children are going to be in trouble. Our communities are going to be in trouble. And our lives, our very lives, are going to be in trouble. So as I make this transition into the next area of um, the meeting tonight, where we're going to have experiences, some experiences that a couple of us have had with some moms for living folks, okay? And I'm gonna kick that off myself before I bring my good friend and brother uh, activist, Kelvin Spates up. But one of the, well, let's just say, okay, let me, the, the five 
that were seated on Charleston County School Board, as I mentioned, Pam McKinney already, but it was also Ed Keller, Keith Grabowski, Carlotta Baker, and also Leah White. Now, a lot of what we take, what we we'll talk about this evening is going to point to the racist aspect of what's going on. Leah Watley, I've had personal interaction with her now for about four years, okay? Apparently she got ticked off by organizing a rally at the Citadel. When I found out that the Citadel Republican Society had invited Steve Bannon down to speak for their dinner. We had about 300 people out there at the rally at the same time he was inside of the, 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 uh, the dinner. And apparently she got upset about that. Because following that, now during that time, the head of the Citadel Republican Society, and you know, personally, I don't really do Republicans, but I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I, if you are cordial and respectful, I'm going to be the same way always. I'm going to be that way. But this, the, the president, he and I, we kind of got, had communications then, got a little tight. And he said, well, listen, you don't think like I do, but why don't you come and address the Citadel Republican Society on whatever issues you like to. And I said, great, great. And so we scheduled it. I went to the, the uh, meeting. I think about 60 or 70 Citadel Republicans, members of the Republican Society there. Great, great delivery, great reception, no negativity. And this was the Citadel students now. It was over. Anybody have any questions? Sitting right here was Leah Watt. And she did like those who want to take the floor to her. She didn't raise her hand and wait to be called though, right? She did one of those. Got up and started talking. And she literally monopolized the time talking about me running against Tim Stein. Why am I talking about democratic values to Republicans? And all of this craziness, she wasn't us, she wasn't a student, she wasn't faculty, she had no business being there, and she actually tried to monopolize it until the president of the society and myself said, hold on, he's here to talk to these students here. And I guess she got mad and she down. The next encounter was in 2020 after George Floyd, when we were in the street to do protesting. Honest disclaimer, none of us that were in the streets after May 30, 31st were in the streets the night of that destruction on King Street. None of us, even though we were rotten, cohorts painted us as being these demons, BLM, Antifa, they come to tear up. Pastor Dixon will tell you. I don't need to. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about the truth. That's about it. But here, somebody sent me a screenshot of, of something that was going on in a private chat room, a, a militia chat room. We, had, we got moles inside of it. Okay? There ain't nothing that they ever gonna do that we ain't gonna get somebody on the inside. Okay, let me just put it out there. If any, anybody here from Mom's from Liberty, y'all, hey, we are there. Okay? But they sent me a screenshot of a comment that she made, and under that was a comment that someone else made, and she did not even correct that. Her comment was just, yeah, I, I checked him at the Citadel, and he's a felon, and uh, We are a mission. Yes, Lord? Oh. <laughs> he's, a, he's a felon, and all of this, and then the person up under her, to tell you just what was going on in that chat room, the person up under this, under her said, on her comment, and she did not correct that her head. Yeah, and he's known to be running underage prostitutes, laundering drug money out of a church over on his head. <laughs> when my wife saw that, she said, where the money at? <laughs> Why you ain't bringing no money home? But that's the interaction that I had with her long before she got elected to the school board. That's why I was able to personally say when she ran, don't let this 
best way to get this seat? Nobody was listening. And she got that seat. And she is one of the worst problems that we have for the monstrosity on that board. Her racism is over. She will definitely side with anyone who believes like she does. Don't do it that way. The way that she did me personally, they're unnecessary. 